and I think there is something too, just as a reminder for anybody who has, because I hear this a lot from my audience where they're like, oh, well, if I put myself first, if I take that time, I'm taking it away from the person that I love or the person that I'm caring for. And I just want to like reframe that and let you know that if we're honest with ourselves, if we just take a minute, we know that if we don't take care of our needs, if I'm hungry, if I haven't slept well, if I haven't showered today, my ability to be patient and to be caring and to give someone the best care that I can is just not there. I'm short tempered. I'm easily frustrated. I can't focus. All I can think about are the things that I should be taking care of for myself. Right. And so instead of viewing it as like, oh, I'm taking this from them, it's like, no, I'm giving to me so that I can continue to give to them. Because if I don't take care of me, I can't continue to give. And every time your brain tries to tell you it's selfish, tries to tell you that, you know, you shouldn't be putting this effort in, I want you to come back to that to be like, no. I mean, the, the visual I've always used is like, you can't pour from an empty pitcher. So like if everybody's asking you for water, like you're going to run out, you know, you get a couple in and you, you have to go refill. Think of that. How much have I poured out? You know, Brené Brown has this great uh, visual about like breath in versus breath out. And she's like, when you give to other people, it's a breath out. And I just love it because in my mind, it's, it's very obvious to be like, well, if I just keep breathing out, I'll pass out. <laughs> right? Right, yeah, right. Keep breathing. And so as you breathe out, make sure you're breathing in, make sure you're doing things that are, that feel good for you. I always tell people, if you have a tough time figuring out what feels good for you, notice what you leave doing, feeling more energized than when you got there. I was just going to say that what energizes you and make a list. What do you love? I mean, it could be just going to a movie or watching a Netflix show, right? Or a show. On so simple. I love to walk through Trader Joe's on my own. I know that sounds so silly, but it's like, it, it can be small things. It doesn't have to be like a big deal. <laughs> yeah. I always say flip it. You know, if you're feeling down, flip it. What would make you feel up and energized? So I think that's great information for our listeners today is I know so many of our listeners are feeling, oh my God, this is me. This is me. I feel this way. And I'm always feel guilty for taking care of myself. And I think what they have to realize is you're only going to be able to give if you give to yourself and your time. Also, another subtlety to this is so many kids I work with, teens, even adults are so dependent on their caregivers for everything and anything because of their inability to communicate effectively. They answer for them. They talk for them. They do for them. So as a result of that, by them giving themselves self-care and some time away <laughs> is going to help independence for their child <laughs> and to be able to learn and also to model them, right? To watch their mother, their father, their caregiver kind of say, hey, listen, I'm going to go for an exercise walk now. Helps me feel calm. It's amazing how our kids just, I mean, they all model their caregivers. Oh, 100%. And I think it's, I mean, the more we can model healthy coping skills, essentially. And so I think, you know, considering that as well, it's like an added reward for taking care of yourself is that you're modeling healthy behavior for your, your child or, you know, the person in your life who you love, who struggles with selective mutism. You're letting them know that when they're feeling overwhelmed, they have these things that they can do. You've modeled multiple ideas. And I think that honestly, all of us could benefit from, from that in our life. No, for sure. Um, you know, a big thing is lack of exercise and movement, which can cause depression. You know, I remember learning this a while back that, you know, with our ancestors millions of years ago, whatever, that lack of movement's a depressant. And so by moving, it's not that it's an antidepressant. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be moving. And so when you don't move, you naturally will become more depressed. You just will. And so I try to, because I'm all about the whole person, right? Like exercise and just going on family walks after dinner or Saturdays going for a small little hike in a park, you know, having these times, joining a gym together and going. And so doing it as a family, because we do work with young children or kids with social anxiety, teens with social anxiety, adults, they don't want to do things alone. So joining a club or an activity is, you know, maybe with a sibling or a close friend, but for the most part, getting the family to change their behaviors and that's self-care for the parent, but you're also, as a result, teaching self-care to the child. 100%. Because it's like, like you said, the, treating the whole person, we treat the whole family because it's a family dynamic, right? Like whether we realize it or not, 
I've always, I'm sure you learned this in school too, but they always talk about like the family dance and how we have like certain ways we interact with each other. And I've always loved the dance analogy. Cause I'm like, it gives me so many funny things to play with. Like, Oh, if your family's doing the Macarena, you know, and you walk in and you're salsa and you're going to run into them and then they're going to be agitated. Right. And so we have a certain way we interact We have a certain song we hear and a dance that we do with each other. And so we have to shift that if we want things to change, because it's not just us. We never live in a vacuum. It's how we interact with each other. And, you know, getting group activity is great. Moving our bodies is very important. All of that is great advice. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, so many families will come to us and they want their child to talk. I just want my daughter to talk in school. I just want this. I just want them to talk, talk, talk. And they focus so much on talking without realizing that's a symptom. Their lack of communication is a symptom of something. And so when we figure out the whys of SM...